In this video, we're exploring kind of an interesting trick where we could immediately write down a power series for some expression by comparing to the convergent geometric series. So here's just a reminder about geometric series. The way I originally defined a geometric series was like this. We started from n equals 1. Um, when you plug that in, you end up with just a for your starting term. And after that, each term ends up multiplied by r compared to the one before it. And as it turns out, that's summed up to a over 1 minus r and was guaranteed to converge provided the absolute value of r was less than 1. Now, a trick we're frequently going to use here is to shift the starting point of our series. So our series starts out with a term that's just a. And then you plug in n equals 2, and you end up with a term that's a times r, and then a times r squared, and so on and so on. So you can mess with the indices on your series as long as you're producing the same terms. And in this case, I can do it like that. So just verify to yourself that when you plug in n equals 0, you get a. When you plug in n equals 1, you get a, r, and so on and so on. All right, now we can use this as a trick for instantly finding power series, provided that we can somehow manipulate things to compare to a geometric series. The first one is just all set up for us. The a is just 1, and then the r is just x. And I can just replace those things in the formula for a geometric series and say that this expression is equal to the sum, as n goes from 1 to infinity, of a times r to the n minus 1. So that's 1 times x to the n minus 1. Or I could shift the starting point, which is more typical when we're talking about power series, to start at 0. And call this the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. Just verify real quick that those two expressions generate the same ex exact list of terms. And then I should address when this converges. This converges if the absolute value of x is less than 1. In other words, our interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1. So this tells us that representing our original expression as an infinite series is valid as long as our x value is between negative 1 and 1. In the next example, we're finding a power series for just a slightly modified version of this. It looks like a over 1 minus r, provided that r was x squared. So I should be able to rewrite this. Sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. Remember, a is 1, and then r was x squared, x squared to the n minus 1. Or, because it's more popular stylistically with power series, I can start at n equals 0 and rewrite it as x squared to the n. It's going to generate the exact same list of terms. And I could clean that up a little and say that that's the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n. So maybe just to look at this in expanded form to really get across the point of what we've done here. Plugging in n equals 0, I get 1. Plugging in n equals 1, I get x squared. Plugging in n equals 2, I get x to the 4th. And so on and so on. So we've actually found a way of writing this simple rational expression as an infinitely long polynomial. Checking the radius of convergence and interval of convergence real quick. This converges provided that that r value, which was x squared, has an absolute value less than 1. And again, that's going to happen if x is between negative 1 and 1. And just for the sake of completeness, I could remind you here that our radius of convergence would be 1 or half the width of the interval. And I don't want to rip off our first example. Um, let's look at that in expanded form as well. So you just plug in all the n's, and I get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, and so on and so on. 